A warm welcome always awaits you at this primary school in South Yorkshire, whether you understand it or not. Bonjour. A bienvenue à notre école. Green Hill Primary School, at Sheffield. Green Hill is fantastical. Unsere Schule heißt Allerherzlichwillkommen. I maestri sono bravi. And we get to learn lots of different languages. At Green Hill School, four modern foreign languages can be heard being spoken or sung. The 500 pupils who attend the school will have a basic grasp of at least two, but sometimes all four languages, by the time they leave. It's a multilingual culture that's been developed with help from people from all over the world. My name is Claudia Cifarelli. I'm an Italian teacher. I come from Italy. I was born in Sicily. I'm Cristina Camacho Rodriguez. I'm from Spain. I'm Tamara Toma and I'm from the south of Germany. My name's Carol Yates and I was born in Northamptonshire. I came to study at Sheffield University and I stayed here. And I've been teaching at Green Hill for over 30 years. It's Carol who's nurtured the growth of modern foreign languages over that time, with a passionate belief that no school should be satisfied with merely speaking in English. She teaches French, but has overseen the introduction of Spanish, Italian and German. They mimic so easily. They mimic more easily than the older children. You know, you, you say a sound that to us is very difficult to say, but somehow they can reproduce it. Montrez-moi un cube rouge, s'il vous plaît. Un cube rouge, oui, c'est ça. Carol arrived at the school in the early 1970s, when French was being taught as part of the experimental initiative called En Avant. But while the scheme fizzled out in most schools, language lessons kept going at Greenhill. The teacher who was teaching French here when I came was inspirational and um, so I, I never let it drop. I've always done a bit of French um, and found that the children who are in the class enjoy it. I like to learn how to speak in French. Is it useful in Sheffield? Um, yeah. Carol was determined that pupils in all classes had the chance to learn another language and she found the right encouragement. They gained tremendous confidence from speaking in another language and because they've gained confidence, that can help them with their maths, for instance. So there is a, there is a link between things. You know, they do want things they gain from one thing, they apply to another. Carol started uncovering the hidden talents of some of her colleagues, like Year 5 teacher Chris Hawksworth. He'd been trained in how to teach German in primary schools, but no one had ever asked him to bother before. So your skills have been lying dormant for, for decades? <laughs> well, they have, actually. And I had to sort of go on a, a course which has enabled me to uh, up those skills a bit, really, and practice them again. And I was fortunate enough to go to Bopard two years ago on a week's course, where I learned uh, a lot of exciting things that I've been able to incorporate into my teaching. Such as? Well, such as uh, games and songs and uh, very simple techniques, like a change of voice. Guten Morgen! Guten Morgen! Guten Morgen! I just hope that, by my example, I I'm hoping to foster an interest in languages and that oh. then children then will have an opportunity to select which language they're most interested in. I notice you're, you're not actually wearing lederhosen in class. <laughs> I don't, you've not seen my legs. <laughs> Where might they speak Spanish if we went on holiday? Brandon. Mexico. Mexico, well done. When Year 3 teacher Jan Reed decided to improve her own language skills by going to night class, she immediately regretted talking about it in the staff room. 
She was reluctantly persuaded to bring the Spanish she learned in the evening into the classroom during the day. The regrets and reluctance, however, were extremely short-lived. I've really, really um, got, got a lot of pleasure from teaching it, in spite of not wanting to do it to start with. Um, I think that rubs off onto the children, and they are enthusiastic about it, and they look forward to doing it. Como estas? Estoy contento. Donde vives? Vivo in Inglaterra. And you must find it useful when you go to your villa in the Costa del Sol. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that day when it's my villa in the Costa del Sol. But it is, yeah, I enjoy it now, and I'm brave enough to, to do it myself now when I go on holiday. Como se dice en inglés cuantos años tienes, Connor? How old are you? How old are you? Do you understand what's going on? Because I don't. Si. Sí. Right. Yeah. Are you good at Spanish? Yeah. Mm. What's good about it? Well, it's just like lots of different countries speak Spanish. It's, it's not just Spain that speaks Spanish, lots of other countries do it too. Hola, buenos dias. Hola, buenos dias. Spanish tuition is assisted by a newly qualified teacher from Spain. She wrote to a number of primary schools in the area, but the only positive response came from Greenhill. She's spending six months in the school, helping all ages, including the foundation class. Four years old is quite young to start learning another language. I don't think so. I think it's quite a good age to start with, because they, they, are, they, are, they have no inhibitions and they, have, they are good at pronunciation and they love repetitions. And if you, if you teach languages with games and with songs and lots these kind of things, they enjoy it and they learn a lot, more than when you start learning when you are older. Also in school at the moment is a trainee teacher from Germany. This year two class is hearing about her recent trip home, when she was escorted by a friend she'd made at the school. It's Barnaby Beth. And he wants to tell you something about Germany. I think you can't teach language without a cultural background background, otherwise it's too artificial, isn't it? They know Barnaby Bear, and so I thought it's a good thing to take Barnaby Bear with me to Germany. So it was yeah, just a kind of introduction that they think, oh, well, I want to know something else about Germany and um, go on with um, the language and um, yeah, tell them some bits about Germany. Yeah, it's looking like gingerbread man. Okay, this is a favorite thing, and Barnaby tried it. It's good. What's good about it? Uh, all the food. Anything in particular? Uh, no. I like it. Why? Because of all the cookies. Is it better than Sheffield? Yeah. Better than Sheffield? Yeah. Do you have cookies in Sheffield? Not the ones like in Germany. No. Do you remember when we sent the letters to the Italian children in Sicily, in Pedara? So this teacher has sent back a nice parcel for you. Wow, guardate, è un quadro. Italian language and culture is taught by a visiting teacher funded by the Italian government. It's a service which started a long time ago for um, first and second generation of people, Italian people, who moved abroad from Italy, so that's why. So it was a, a, a way of helping the children to settle down in the new environment. Quattro, cinque, sei, sette. I think it's important to learn a foreign language, whichever it is, it doesn't matter, because it helps children um, use their brain in a different way anyway and it's important to see how a different language works and to know more about other culture other people and so on do you think it's useful i like it yeah, i think it is why is it useful because when you go to like italian or some restaurants you can speak to them yeah what do you order um i've never been to one <laughs> <laughs> And what do your mum and dad think about you learning Italian? What are they saying? She, she really likes it and, well, they really like it because they like me to learn other languages because if, if I go there, and they, they like me to go to different places. Uno, due, tre, via. Italian lessons are also being taken this year by a linguist from the nearby Meadowhead Secondary School and Language College. 
Again, the teaching involves a lot of games and activities. The Lion game, that was uh, to practice um, how old are you and, uh, and the answer. It's like a, a race between two teams, which team can say it uh, the, the quickest, saying it accurately, as accurately as possible. Abito in España, a Madrid. So are you always having to think of new games? Yes, so they can do an activity that they enjoy and that it will help them to learn those question and answers, which in the classroom just sat next to each other, practising them can be a bit boring. Come ti chiami? Mi chiamo Amir. Benissimo. But do you find primary pupils are very receptive to languages? Very, very. Um, more so than secondary people? More so than secondary because they, there are no inhibitions. You know, there's no peer pressure, there's no, they're not, they don't mind what they say. The visiting teachers stay in touch and forge lasting links when they return to schools in their home countries. And they include a teacher from China who came to Green Hill last year. Everything we've done so far has been European, apart from the Chinese input that we've had. Um, but, you know, we don't, say, we don't say no to it. We say yes to everything we're offered, really, no matter where it's from. It just happens that Europe is closer, and that's what we get. By welcoming visitors from abroad, accepting all offers of help, and using bilingual staff, Greenhill has managed to provide language lessons for every pupil every week. But the schools found that pupils make the most progress when they're taught by their own form teachers. I've done it in two different ways. I work with my own class and I can teach a little bit every day and then it, it gets consolidated really quickly. But um, when I teach a class once a week, which I did last year, that was more difficult to make the progress. So I think if teachers are teaching it and they can be brave enough to do a little bit every day, that really you know, uh, makes a difference. It means that pupils can use their language skills in other subjects, especially maths. 57. Taking the register provides another opportunity. I mean, there are more staff now actually volunteering to learn languages than, than ever before. You know, actually going off and doing evening classes and trying to improve their own competence uh, just so they can stay, stay with the pupils. I mean, that's fantastic, isn't it? Recent government encouragement of languages in primaries is, of course, welcomed at Greenhill, but they'd like more official recognition. On that shelf there's the Ofsted Chief Inspector's report, and that's really, when you look at what, what are called successful schools in there, that's success based on SATs not success based on a whole raft of things in school. That's not fair. Despite that, the school is keen to expand its language teaching. It's an essential part of preparing pupils for life beyond Yorkshire. And I hope that if, if and when they travel abroad, they won't feel such a stranger and they, won't, they will have a better understanding of all of the other cultures and peoples that they've been learning about and that it'll help dispel some of the myths of, you know, English is best and when we go abroad we have to have English food and we have to speak English. I hope that children from here will not be that sort of person when they're travelling abroad.